Hey guys, it's Drew with the Kusha Collectibles. Welcome back to a brand new video. Uh, we are going, we have already went to Trent's house. Uh, Trent's a great coin dealer of ours that we know, and he lets us take a seat at his table, buy some great coins. We had an interview with Trent this video, and we have some awesome coins to show off. Let's get this video started. We are back with Trent Schwartz in Texas. Hey Trent, how are you doing? Doing good, how about you Casey? Fantastic, what show are you going to next, Trent? So if people uh, wanna get a hold of you, they can. Depending on the schedule, probably Waco um, and mid-April, I'm gonna have a probably pretty busy end of the month, and so I probably won't get to another show till about oh, middle of the month in April. Um, that's the plan. So what are the two crazy coins out of your collection that you will not sell and are highly coveted within the Barber series? So we'll talk about this one first. Um, and we may have showed this one before, I'm not sure, but this is a uh, PCGS Pro 58 and it cacked. And it's got old cameo contrast. I mean, you just see how the field's raised. It's kind of a lighter, lighter, uh, you know, head and in, in relation to the fields but this coin when i bought it i paid over retail to get it and i think i don't know i've had probably six seven maybe eight offers on it um, i had some offers that were probably double retail on the coin uh, but it's just something you can't find it's pop one um i probably won't sell it unless somebody just i mean even double retail didn't make me sell it, so that tells you I'm probably not going to sell it. It's just it's a very hard coin to find. So did you buy it in the slab or did you buy it raw? No, I bought it in the slab. Um, just got lucky. He was surfing Facebook one night, and that's the kind of stuff I like. And uh, bit the bullet, paid over retail, and bought it because I was like, that's a marquee piece for anyone's collection. Would you say it's easier to find uh, proofs in slabs already or uh, raw? So barber proofs, generally, you're only going to find in slabs. I have seen on maybe two occasions raw barber proofs. Um, and a lot of the times you got to be very careful because they're coins that people have cracked out because they were old details coins. Um, and they're trying to pass them off as, you know, original, you know, not clean, no scratches, no damage. And they're trying to sell them, you know, for higher price than they could for the straight up, uh, details graded coin so you have to be careful I think I've seen one coin and then it was a, ba a barber dime that would have straight graded that was raw and somebody had cracked it out for their typeset but just finding some floating out there um, in the ether so to speak is, is pretty difficult so you've been in this space for quite a while and you've submitted a lot of coins to NGC PCGS and the various other ones uh, what, are, what are your thoughts on what they're doing now in their service and uh, what you think uh, might be a new contender within the space? So uh, right now I kind of got a problem with the both of them. Uh, the turnaround times are super slow. Um, they don't have all their options available for grading tiers. I think the last order I placed in, um, they wouldn't even give me uh, the upper tier to submit a coin. So I couldn't submit any of my higher grade coins. It was only economy. Um, so that's frustrating. Um, and then I just feel like they're body bagging more coins than they have in the past. Um, there's nothing wrong with being strict as a grading service, but that's within reason. You know, stuff that in any normal standard would be acceptable coin, they're just body bagging everything. Um, and I think there's a there's a place for the grading service, but I think only the big guys uh, out there are the ones getting the benefit of the grading service right now. Us little guys, we're we're getting you know. We're getting hammered on everything we send in, and we we pay you know way more uh, uh, money than the big guys are because you know they've got wholesale accounts, and so it's one of those things. You either you either play it or you don't, and so it's up to you. I mean, you either pay the price or just sell them wrong. But uh, I personally, if it's not for my personal collection, so like this type of stuff. If it's going to be for my personal, I will send in to PCGS and NGC now. But right now, anything that I'm doing for the business is going straight through Annex. The turnaround times are better. Their grading has been on point lately. What's their rates like? Uh, compared to PCGS and NGC, they're probably 20-30% back, depending on what you're submitting. Which, 
again, if you can save 20 to 30% on the submission, you're, you know, on a coin, you've already got a tight margin on. That's, that's huge. Um, and then if you talk about, you know, an upper tier coin, I think it's from like 500 to 2000, they're way cheaper than, than the other two guys. So, um, I've had a very good experiences with them recently. I know a lot of people down NX, they, you know, I think of them as like the third, you know, like a lower tier to PCGS and NGC. Um, you can't cack them, which is also a problem, but if you're just trying to grade a coin to authenticate it and keep it in your collection, um, in most cases, I will pay gray sheet for NX coins. Now, a lot of dealers, they're gonna try to ding you. Um, they're gonna say that's an inferior grading service. I, I personally don't think that. If it's a good coin, it's a good coin. You know, so that, I, I am switching to them personally, unless it's for uh, my personal collection. Trent is the homie, all right? The brother in. He uh, has blessed us with some information so far. We are that very thankful for everything that he does. Follow him if you haven't. Subscribe if you're new. Like this video if you want to see more from us. And uh, comment your thoughts. Thank you, Disposal. We really appreciate that. Let's get back to today's video. If you were starting off in this business, Trent, where would you go about sourcing most of your coins? Uh, so when I started, the you know the town that I was in, there was no shows, no nothing. I mean, we had one coin shop, one or well two shops that did somewhat coins and jewelry. Um, I spent a lot of time in the coin shop because it was kind of like a hangout place for all the you know coin junkies um, in town. They had tables and chairs. You could sit and talk. Uh, I think I went through every coin in that guy's inventory in you know, about the three or four years that I got serious with it again. Just learning series by series by series, learning how to grade them. Um, I don't think there's a Dan Scope book that I haven't done um, through that guy in the shop. So find a good local shop, start there, find a series you like, buy it, learn how to grade it, you know, collect it. Um, and then go series by series. If you go, the, the biggest thing people get in trouble with is if they go to a show right away, and it can be very, very, very overwhelming. And so there's a lot of coins there, um, and you can get yourself in trouble really, really quickly. So, you know, get a series first, learn it, learn how to grade it, then move on. Get a series, learn how to grade it, then move on. Um, but shows you have the most variety, shops, you're gonna get that more personable experience if you have a good shop. Um, they'll have the supplies, they'll have you know um, some of the lower end stuff that you may need, you know, they'll have all the books and everything like that. Um, and then I relied on eBay a lot when I first started, but that's when I you know wasn't really following the price guides and I was just buying stuff because I liked it. And so eBay's a great place, you just gotta know what you're doing. Um, but a lot of different avenues, you know, other thing, buy books, buy numismatic books. If you like a series, there's more than likely a book that's been written in it. Go find the book, buy it, read it, and become more knowledgeable about the series itself. So if people were interested in reaching out to you about barbers and just coins in general and their collection, where can they find you? Uh, they can find me on Instagram at TCS Coins. Um, and I don't know, you can probably put that. I don't have the exact write out, but at TCS Coins. Um, on Instagram, all my information is on there. You can reach out to me if there's coins you're interested in. Um, I typically will go to a show and I'll buy um, large batches of raw type coins, which is what I primarily specialize in. Um, I'll post a picture of what I've got, if there's anything of interest. Um, I posted a picture recently and had a lot of coins get bought out of there. So, I mean, you can go go look on there right now. And if there's something something you want, shoot, a, shoot me a message. Or if there's a type coin you need, shoot me a message. Um, Normally can find them or hunt them down pretty quick. Um, but Barbers is my specialty, Barbers is my personal, but uh, overall in general, I deal primarily in raw type coins. That's my number one seller. Okay, thank you Trent for your time, we appreciate it. No problem, always good having you guys. Okay. 
All right, guys, just got home from Trent's house. Got a whole lot of cool stuff to show you in this episode. Picked up a few Mexican coinage just for the collection. I don't know, a few things jumped out to me. Sometimes you just add stuff to, uh, you know, put some things aside. I've been picking up, you know, uh, some Peru stuff, some Mexican stuff, just something to, I don't know, research when you're bored. Kind of interesting things like that. We're going to start off with a pretty cool coin here, 1840 Seated half dollar graded, uh, you know, VF35. That was Trent's kind of idea on the coin. The reason why I picked this coin up is because I feel it's 100% original. Nice, even circulation. No old cleaning. You can even see that between the stars. Just a nice, wholesome, tough coin to find, especially raw. And uh, very happy that he handed me that coin. It's just, I think it came out of his personal set too. So very thankful that Trent did that for me. Here are a few 1876 uh, Carson City Dimes here. Um, you know, just nice hole fillers for the set. I'm trying to find ones that are a little bit of a better grade. And this one ended up fitting pretty well. Here's another one to show you guys. Also, this one I think is artificial. Um, you can see that there's this kind of darkness to, or kind of, you know, fieriness to it. And a little bit of blue right by the Liberty Shield there. And, you know, that thing, you think, okay, that's a normal, you know, dime. And it, and it kind of, it kind of got that toning naturally. And then when you flip it over, you kind of see this like really weird uh, spottiness right where the one dime is and goes all the way through the wreath here. I think someone just had this somewhere where it was extremely hot, maybe an oven, and it gave it this kind of appearance, but still has some stuff, you know, details on the coin here. Um, and you can kind of see that, you know, all the details are kind of starting to get a little mushy on the obverse. So just something to look out for, especially when you're out hunting. But I thought it was interesting enough to pick up. This is an 1882 seated dime. The reason why I bought this coin is because it looks nice, original, just like the 1840O that I showed you guys. Um, didn't see any old cleaning on the coin, just natural, wholesome circulation. I kind of want to buy coins like this every time I go anywhere, just because they're the ones that sell and they're the ones that you know people enjoy their history. Most of the time, people understand that you know there's a lot of things that go into a coin and it's great. But over time, you're going to want to buy coins that just have a natural uh, story throughout history. Uh, you don't want to get a coin sometimes where at the end of its life or the life that you can, when it's passed on to you, you know, it looks something that's cleaned or has issues. This is an interesting coin. This is an 1821 cap bust half. I didn't see any cleaning underneath this, this toning here, which was kind of interesting. Still has some... Uh, kind of luster in the stars there also but don't see this too often either and I thought I'd pick it up I didn't think anything was messed with on it but it's just an, a neat VF piece I kind of like buying coins like that and then I also like buying coins like I said that are super original this is 1810 uh, cap bust half really early date here as you can see and nothing really messed up about it no problems on the coin uh, the rims are kind of a little bit choppy but that's kind of what you expect on most of these especially when they're raw and you now i'm very thankful that everything that what trent's doing he offers so many nice raw coins he likes to search anything at a show and most of the time when we buy holder stuff uh, we just don't have the funding for this stuff at the end of the show so whenever trent goes to a show he knows what he's looking for he knows his clients very well just very happy for trent if you guys are interested in reaching out to trent about a few raw coins I'll leave his info down below, just like we were talking about in the interview. This is a 1921S Walking Liberty half. Um, just a key date. Most of the time when I buy raw stuff, I want to buy it if it's nice original, but also just a just a hard coin to find in any grade. 1921S is no exception here, and it's pretty affordable for a whole filler in a Walking Liberty half set. Uh, but buying a lot of Indian head scents recently. This is a 1906 Indian head scent. I would grade this one AU over MS, but uh, it's still a pretty decent coin. And I really want to offer every single tier of coin when you go on our website, AcousticCollectibles.com. It's just something that's important to me because, you know, not everyone can spend $1,000 or $2,000 or $500 on a coin. They just want something they can hold in their hand that's nice and original. This coin is not original, but it's a very tough coin to find, nonetheless. This is a 1918S Walking Liberty half. I think it's been harshly cleaned in the in the fields here, as you can see. Someone just messed with this coin way too much, and uh, we just gave it a net grade of XF cleaned, and I, I kind of agree with that. 
uh, I agree with that kind of grade for the coin, but still an interesting piece. I still buy a lot of teen stuff. It is a key date, and people are out there hunting for it at any kind of level. This is an 1895 uh, Indian head scent. I, I'd say this is MS, MS63 or 64. Kind of priced this one a little bit low um, just because, you know, it's it's not graded and, you know, it still has some nice reds in it and a little bit delicate of browns. But let me show you guys just a few more coins here. Okay, we're back with some nice original coins here. This is an 1874 seated half dollar. This one has arrows on it. Uh, once again, we're going back to the nice originality and, at, you know, constant but even circulation on this coin. Just a phenomenal piece. Very happy. Trent finds stuff like this. Sometimes it's just harder to get coins like this from dealers. Uh, you know, but he does a really phenomenal job at doing that. Here's a nice Civil War half dime. Um, just the one that would fit perfectly in a set. Another one that, that really stuck out to me. He actually pulled out a few coins from his personal collection while I was there. And I was very fortunate enough to cherry pick a few of those. Did have to pay a little bit up for them, but very thankful that um, you know things like that are offered to us. Uh, you know, starting to become more and more common, and we're so thankful for it because you know we go to Grapevine and other Texas shows, and sometimes Louisiana shows, and sometimes a lot of people just don't get to see everything that our dealer brings. And then when they see us in person, they're able to uh, show us that stuff, and we're able to get dibs on it. And it's been. Just a great thing. And that's kind of the reason why we haven't been going to bigger shows. We've just been trying to get some nice local connections. So whenever something cool comes into Texas, we try to get it first. But here is an 1854 Franklin half dollar. Uh, I would say this is a 64, maybe 65. There's a little bit of hits you can see right down there. Um, it's pretty hard to see. But I'll have some better photos on our website. It has a nice bullseye toning on the obverse here. I like to get coins that are a little bit more common but with character and this one has some nice luster and some nice color and you guys know we enjoy these two cent pieces this one has a nice little chocolate brown to it but we've been buying ones that have been in holders and been buying ones that are raw it just has to have the right appearance to it you can kind of see some carbon spots just right where it says trust and a little bit over god there but it's a large motto coin been trying to find one that's small as a small motto maybe a dealer overlooks it small motto 1864 two cent pieces are things that you guys really should look out for because sometimes they're overlooked and they can cost a pretty penny especially in someone that's trying to find one here's 1875 not an 1875s 20 cent piece so i bought this one because we have a lot of 20 uh 1875s 20 cent pieces available but not at 75 and this one I thought looked nice and wholesome, and uh, it might have had some light cleaning when it was you know, way back then, but right now it looks really nice. It filled in a little bit of that with the retoning, as you can see, but still pretty nice hole filler for a 20 cent kind of collector. And you're not going into crazy money like, you know, Men State 64s, you know, 1875S, they're going for 1500 bucks or even more right now. So just something for you guys to understand, and, you know, we're trying to find coins that can fit anyone's collection. Here's the 1837 Reeded Edge Cap Bust Half. Probably one of the most affordable you're gonna find right now. There's a lot, a few rim dings on the coin which kind of uh, neck grades it down for me, but the fields are pretty clear. No old cleaning that I can see. But like I said, those rim dings are kind of hitting the coin too much for it to be worth a little bit more than that. But 80 bucks is pretty neat on that coin. Another nice original kind of chocolatey looking scent from 1855. It's the upright, not the slanted. And yeah, that's a pretty neat piece. Here's one of my favorite pickups of uh, while we were there. We actually bought this before we even arrived. It's the 1807 Drape Bust Half. And uh, it's been circulated a lot, but there is just so many nice, de de <laughs> decent details on the coin. Sorry about that. And I couldn't be more happy to pick this one up. I think there was three or four people trying to nab this one from Trent. But I was the first one to jump on it. I know that Trent has some pretty remarkable pieces. And buying one, you know, buying a Drape Bust Half from 1807 is just something that will sell quick. And it's a kind of a hole filler for somebody. And especially in our shop, we just don't have those that come by that often. Here's an 1828 Half Cent, 13 stars. Still has some chocolate browns on it. You can still see that circulation though on the face there, but you know, 
We try to offer everything that we can, especially when it's raw. Here's an 1856 half dime. One of my favorite kind of smaller coins right now, just because, you know, it just screams originality. And it has a really nice appearance to it, really PQ. And, you know, it's super cool. But here's a 1945 Mercury dime. The reason why I picked this sucker up is because it has this kind of halo toning around uh, the rim of the coin. It might have been an old PCI holder way back then, not too sure, but definitely some natural toning and some sweet luster on the coin still. I ended up buying a few of these a few weeks back from Dickey, and he uh, sold those to them. They're probably XF, VF. Uh, one was cleaned, and those sell, sold out pretty quick, so I wanted to give kind of a, a run on this one just to offer something that's kind of interesting. It is a little bit more of a new age coin, but nonetheless still a pretty cool one. Here's an 1858-0 half dime. Same kind of trend here, very nice original. And it's a New Orleans mint coin, a little bit tougher to find, especially raw and original. And like I said, this one probably came from Trent's personal collection. And this guy looks through thousands and thousands of coins. So when he puts something back like this, you know it's something special. And I was just so thankful to look through coins like this and be able to pick it up because you guys don't know how hard it is sometimes to find those. And because most of the time when you have original coins like this, they're going to be in holders, they're going to be graded, and they're going to be marked up. And Trent just gave us a wonderful deal on that one, and I'm so thankful for that. Here are a few barbers that came from Trent's collection, and here's a buffalo that came from my collection. The reason why he's kind of selling these is because they didn't cack. So that's something for you guys to understand up front. It's just weren't, they weren't good for the grade, or, you know, it, it's just something that John didn't like. But... Uh, you know, you know they didn't work up at work out at CAC, but still pretty neat pieces, especially for someone that's collecting circulated barbers. I know I have a few guys like that, and Trent was, uh, you know, not eager to let him go, but he ended up giving us a good price on these. Also, we showed these in a previous CAC video, but now we get to spend a little bit more time looking at each one, and they have their own spe specific pictures on our website. This one's kind of my favorite, just because it has that kind of rim toning to it. And there's just, it kind of looks problem free to me, but I, I like the coins a lot. Barbers are starting to grow on to me because Trent likes them so much. And knowing Trent and what he enjoys just kind of fuels my flame for barbers. And I want to find some cool stuff for him, hopefully one of these days. He fuels our shop a lot of ways with raw stuff and a few graded things. And so maybe finding one that's CAC certified for him for a great price would be something that we can do. And... You know, Trent's just such an awesome guy. You really guys really should follow him on Instagram. This is a 1930S Buffalo Nickel. Has toning all on the obverse here. And this one didn't cack, but the coin still is spectacular. I'm trying to find, uh, you know, liquidate a few coins to find and, and buy a new one that would fit the set more, more nicely. It's either a Buffalo or it's going to be a commemorative. And we have a few coins in the works as well. Still waiting on cack. CAC's been taking about three weeks, but here's kind of the biggest kahuna of the video. This is an 1886-0 in Mint State 61. Tough coin to find for an O-Mint here. Uh, as you guys can see that, um, you know, we have a price tag of $1,400 on it just because it is just a rare coin to find. And we had a guy on Instagram reach out to us and offer this to us. So thank you, Sid. We appreciate it. And we hope you guys enjoyed this video today. All these nice raw coins. Let's cut it to the outro. Thank you guys for watching today's video. If you guys did enjoy today's video, please leave a like. Uh, comment your thoughts about the coins. Comment your thoughts about Trent. Are you guys going to follow Trent on Instagram? That needs to happen if you can. He's just a great guy to reach out to for some raw stuff. And subscribe if you're new. We will see you guys in the next video.